Hello. So, in this example, um, we are asked to use the definition of Riemann sum to find the exact area. So the exact area is um, the sort of limiting process where we are counting the what's called signed area, meaning that negative values count as negative area. So the sort of good news about this is that I don't have to worry so much about uh, where the function's positive or negative. Bad news is, is that because it wants the exact area, I'm gonna have to do the crazy limiting shenanigans with that Riemann sum. Now, because I'm gonna use a limit, it doesn't actually matter which Riemann sum sort of form I use. I could use the right end point, left end point, midpoint. They'll all end up equaling the same because they'll all be a perfect approximation, the right number, um, sort of regardless of which one I use. I personally tend to like to use the right uh, approximation because I enjoy sort of starting at one and ending at n feels more normal than starting at zero and ending at n minus one. Um, and at the same time, like using a half width is just sort of computationally annoying, so I usually try to avoid that. So I'm gonna use the right Riemann approximation. You are welcome to use whichever one you like. Uh, I would recommend the right Riemann approximation. That one seems to be sort of less likely to have errors, but teach their own. All right, <clears throat> so I have my uh, F and I have my interval, right? And the trick here is that I'm gonna be setting up the original sum as a generic um, N rectangle. So I'm not gonna say like five rectangles, I'm gonna leave it as an N. So the first thing that I need to sort of consider then is that I need my width, right? Because again, my sort of my formula, right, is width times height. I'm gonna switch markers, this one seems to be dying on me a little. So my width is gonna be the total width, four minus one, right? Over the number of rectangles that we're using. Well, the number of rectangles we're using, I'm gonna mark as capital N, okay? So my width is already some generic thing, it's not a specific thing, which is not ideal, uh, but it is what it is, okay? Then my height, right, again, if I'm, not, if I'm not remembering the things all that well, I can do my little cartoon sketch, right? Be like, okay, if there's three rectangles and I'm doing a right approximation, sort of looks like this, but that means that I do need to go one width over for that first height. So I'm gonna end up with a sum. My width is gonna be four minus one over N, which is, three over n, right, just to be clear, that's three over n. My height is f of the starting value, which is x equals one, plus however many widths I moved over, and each width is three over capital N. Now, by convention, we usually use little n for the number of widths we've moved, and that is often done here, and that just seems sort of unnecessarily sadistic, right? Like having little n's and capital n's and all of this stuff. So even though it's convention to use a little n, I'm gonna break the mold here, I'm gonna do something different, I'm gonna use a, going crazy here, I'm gonna use a k. Um, but your instructor or the, uh, you know, if you look this up elsewhere, it's very common to see little n and capital n and yeah, I know, it's annoying, um, but that's just the way it is often done. Uh, again, it, end, it starts one width over and then it ends however many widths over, right, that there are actual rectangles, meaning I'm gonna go from one to capital N here, okay? Now, the whole idea here is that ultimately what I want to calculate is the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum K going from one to capital N of this thing uh, times three over capital N F of one plus K times three over capital N. 
And the important thing to remember through this process is that you can move stuff outside of the sum as long as it doesn't depend on the index, which is K, not capital N. This is going to be pivotal, okay? So in particular, I could move this 3 over capital N out, and I will at one point. But the first thing I'm going to do before that, I'm eventually going to write that this equals some craziness. Um, and in fact, I, I will start the craziness, but I will not write all of it. Uh, so this is going to be n to infinity of 3 over capital N times the sum k going from 1 to capital N of stuff. And you may think like, ah, oh, well, capital N here going to infinity means this is going to zero, so everything else doesn't matter because I'm multiplying by zero. No. <laughs> so remember with limits, right, it's very possible to have something that looks like zero times infinity or something going to zero times something going to infinity, and that's indeterminate. And in fact, that's what's going to, that's what would happen if we sort of just left it like that. So that's not going to work for us. Um, we can't just skip ahead at this point because then all integral, all exact areas ever would be zero, and clearly that's not the case, right? But what I'm going to do, so I'm going to factor out that 3 over capital N. What I'm going to do is apply F to this thing within the sum. So I'm not going to write out the sort of bit by bit part. I'm going to write it in just in here. So my F then is X squared. So it's the input squared. So I'm going to have 1 plus K times 3 over capital N squared plus 2 times the input, 2 times 1 plus k 3 over capital N minus 3. So I'm still doing the sum of all of this. Okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of k as being the variable, not capital N, for the sake of what I'm doing in here. And I'm going to break everything apart and then combine like terms sort of as best as I can. Where again, k is the playing the role of the variable. So I'm going to sort of break it up and look at it as sort of like stuff times k squared plus stuff times k plus stuff by itself. Like that's the goal, okay? So 3 over n sum k going 1 to capital N. So here I can expand this out. So I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1, then 2 times their product. So I'm going to get uh, 6 over capital N K plus this last thing squared, which is going to be 9 over N squared K squared. So that's just foiling that thing out. Um, go ahead and do it out sort of longhand if you need. Then I'm going to multiply that out. So I'm going to get 2 plus 6 over N K. And then I still have that minus 3. And now I'm going to combine like terms, where again, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but again, I'm using k as the variable. So I'm grouping things together according to k. So I'm going to have 9 over n squared k squared. So that's my k squareds. Then I have regular k's. So then I'm going to have plus 12 over n k plus 1 plus 2 minus 3, that's going to be 0. I don't have to write that, but I'm writing it just to make it clear I've accounted for it. So then here, I'm going to replace what I found there, which is I now have 9 over n squared k squared plus 12 over n k. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of a crazy thing. This is a finite sum at this point, so I'm going to use that to break this apart. So I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n times. Then I'm going to have the sum, k, going from 1 to n of 9 over n squared times k squared plus, and I'm breaking this apart, so I'm going to then have uh, the sum k going from 1 to n 
of 12 over n k. Okay. Now why do that? So the next thing I'm going to do is, again, beating a dead horse here, but remember, k is the thing that changes. That's the index. And what that means is that anything that doesn't depend on k at all, I can pull into the front. I can pull out of the sum and put it in front of the sum. So I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n. Remember, 3 over n multiplied everything, so that's why I need the bracket here. Now, the n, 9 over n squared doesn't depend on k, so I can pull that out. So I'm going to get 9 over n squared times the sum of k going from 1 to n of k squared. Okay. Plus, same deal here. The 12 over n doesn't depend on k, so then I can do 12 over n times the sum from k going from 1 to n of k. So now I'm going to use two little facts that you may have seen before, you may not have seen before, depending on, again, who's teaching or who you've had for pre-calc or any number of other factors. Um, so I'm going to sort of just give them without proof here, but maybe we'll have a separate video or maybe it'll be in the text somewhere or whatever. Um, if you're unsure, feel free to ask your instructor. They should be able to give you where this stuff comes from. Regardless, the sum of, in general, if you have something like and going from one, in fact, let me just go ahead and use the same variables for the sake of clarity. Uh, in general, if you have something like k going from one to capital N of k, this is equal to k times k plus one over two. And that's not the letter I wanted. See, I, I was gonna write k as, as the other part and I just, I went on autopilot, sorry. Same thing, but it's n. n times n plus 1 over 2. There we go. And this is a closed form, meaning that in practice, right, an example would be, um, so this is just adding together the numbers, right, like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to n. So if you wanted to do like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 up to say 100, you can actually calculate this without doing the running sum by doing the last number, 100 times 100 plus 1 over 2, which is uh, 100 over 2, 50 times 101, which is 50, 50. All right, so that's what the first, the sum of the first 100 numbers would be. So that's what this formula is, is doing. It's giving us what's called a closed form of the original sum, of something that doesn't involve a dot, 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 or a, or a sum symbol. Similarly, there's another formula. If I go from k equals 1 to n for k squared, which is pretty close to the same. So this is, oops, sorry. Let me write that so that's not as awful. So it's n times n plus 1 again, times now 2n plus 1 over, instead of 2, 6. Okay. So again, same deal. If I'm adding up, say, um, 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 up to uh, 10,000, right? If I square each of these numbers, then it would be 100 times 101 times 201 all divided by 6. That would be your your end result, okay? The important thing here, though, is that I can now do that here. This is where it was key. So using these two formulas, which you may have seen before, as I said, you may not have, um, but it's sort of a thing you need to know to be able to do these uh, exact value things. Doing that, I'm gonna have the limit as n goes to infinity of three over capital N and 9 over n squared times, right, this is just this thing right here. So I'm going to have n times n plus 1 times n, uh, sorry, 2n plus 1. Two n plus 1 
all over 6. So that's what this is. So this thing became this thing. And it's the closed form version of this. Okay. And similarly, I'm going to do the same thing here with this formula. Plus 12 over n times n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay. So now I'm going to clean this up a little before I worry about the limit part. And that's really, this is the magic right here. This is the step that's really hard, going from here to here, right? Because all of these will ultimately boil down to apply f to get something that looks like this, spread out, right, split up according to the sum, factor things out until you're looking at the sum of a thing or a thing squared or whatever, and then use these closed form versions to get it into something that doesn't have that sigma anymore. That's the key, right? So it's, it's these few steps is where all the magic happens. Everything else is just simplifying in algebra. So it's going to be 3 over n. So right away, I notice, right, that I can cancel one of those to that, and I can cancel that with that. Then I'm going to distribute this thing. Um, so I'm going to get 9 over n, that's what's left over there, times. Um, and in fact, I can actually do a little bit better. Let me back up. So I can also um, factor a 3 here. So that's going to be a 2. That's going to be a 3. Uh, uh, yep. And then that 2 can cancel against one of those, leaving me a 6 there. All right. So then I'm going to get 3 over n times. Now I'm going to distribute that out because that's going to be ultimately useful. Um, so I'm going to get 2n squared uh, plus n plus 2n, so plus 3n, and then plus 1, all over 2, plus 6 times n plus 1. All right. So then here, I'm going to have 9 over n squared, like so I'm going to... I'm going to move the 3 over n in, so I'm going to get 9 over n squared times 2 over n squared plus 3n plus 1. I think I said over n squared, but times n squared, uh, and this is times 2 on the bottom. And this is going to be 18 times n plus 1 over n. All right, so that's doing the 3 times 6 and then everything over n. This color is getting boring, so I'm going to switch. Let's see if my green has got some life back into it. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity. So now I'm going to do that thing that we did with polynomials before where we sort of divided the top and bottom of a rational by a nice uh, factor of n. So here I'm going to divide the top and bottom by n squared. So I'm going to put in the 9 and do that at the same time. So 9 times 2n squared is 18n squared divided by n squared. So I'm going to get 18 plus 9 times 3 is 27. n over n squared is going to get me 27 over n. And then 9 times 1 is 9 over n squared. And all of this is dividing by 2 and then the n squared and n squared. And here I'm going to divide the top and bottom by n. So I'm going to get 18n over n is 18 plus uh, 18 over n. So now if I apply n, I will see, right, as I, if I apply, sorry, the limit as n goes to infinity, we have that this goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. So this, when I actually calculate it, ends up giving me 18 over 2 plus 18, which is 9 plus 18, which is 27. 
And that is my answer. Yeah, it's, it's a bit long and involved. <laughs> so again, the setup is the same as it sort of normally is when we're doing remount approximation. It's just that now we're leaving it in terms of a generic n, right? So we still have width and height. We're using, in my case, I'm using the right uh, remount approximation. So I have this as my formula, but I'm leaving it in terms of n. So I apply my f, right, and get this beast. And then I sort of have to expand and then contract it, right, so that I get all my like terms together where by like terms, what I'm really thinking of is as if k were the variable because I'm going to want to split this up a little bit later right here so that my k pieces are sort of separated according to their power, which is what I do next, right? So I say, okay, I have my k squared stuff, my k stuff. I can pull out the coefficient because they don't depend on k, right? They depend on n, but that's not the index variable. So I can pull those pieces out and then I use these two things to turn my sums into closed forms. And once I've done that, the game is pretty much over. I just have to, just have to um, expand everything out and collapse everything and combine light terms and get all the way down until I can actually take the limit, right? By dividing the top and bottom by some appropriate power of n so that the limit actually gets me, right, finite values instead of up here where I get things like infinity over infinity, which is still indeterminate. So sort of turn the crank, get through all of the, right, all of the simplification and everything, and get your answer, 27, okay? So that's that. Hello, so in this example, we are using a Riemann sum to find the exact uh, signed area, meaning positive and negative uh, count as positive and negative area. And specifically, the area under this sort of curve here. So the goal um, sort of is to sort of start with the normal Riemann approximation. Again, we can use any of the right, left, or middle. I'm going to use the right because I sort of just find it easier. So I'm going to sort of set it up just like I would as if I were doing this with a normal like use five rectangles kind of problem. Um, the only example, the only sort of exception is I'm going to use k as an index because. We're going to use capital N as the sort of maximum uh, number of rectangles in some sense. I don't want to use little n and capital N. So I'm going to set it up the same way with some width times height. But here I'm going to use sort of a generic um, capital N number of rectangles, right? So. I'm going to start by getting my width, just like I normally do, right? So my width is the full width, 3 minus minus 1, divided by the number of rectangles, which is capital N. This is my width. And that's going to be 3 minus 1 is 3 minus minus 1 is 4. So it's going to be 4 over capital N. So I'm going to get the sum of 4 over capital N times the height, but the height is that f of the starting value, minus 1, plus however many um, areas I've gone over, or widths I've gone over, which is k, times that width, 4 over n. And because I'm using a right uh, Riemann sum, my k is going to start from 1 and go to capital N. Okay. So just like, you know, sort of normal-ish, uh, all right, the big difference here is that I'm, I'm ultimately going to be looking at the limit as capital N goes to infinity of this thing. I'm going to pull out the 4 over N from the sum because, again, the sum only cares about K. So the K going from 1 to N of this thing. As a matter of fact, I'll write, I'll write that. F of minus 1 plus K times 4 over capital N. But now I'm going to actually apply f and sort of right, expand everything out and then collapse everything in so I can get sort of a, a nice uh, result, sort of a nice um, looking sort of almost quadratic in terms of k, right? Because I'm going to group things by k. So this is, in fact, all I care about is this. So I'm just going to be doing this, this part, the f of part, not that way I don't have to write the 
right, the sum, k going from 1 to n, of 4 over n, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that part. I'm just going to do the, the f part for now. So uh, I'm going to apply this, right, I'm going to apply this function to this input. So I'm going to get the input squared, so minus 1 plus k times 4 over capital N squared minus 5 times the input, which was minus 1 uh, plus k times 4 over n, and minus 6. So that is applying f to that input, right? Uh, counting my things here, yes. Okay, so this is all of that. So now I'm going to expand everything and start, that way I can start to group like terms. So squaring the thing, I'm going to end up with negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 times that, so I'm going to get negative uh, 8 over capital M K minus, uh, sorry, plus that thing squared, which is 16 over N squared K squared. Minus 5 times minus 1, so that's plus 5. Minus 5 times that, so that's going to be minus 20 over N K, and then just minus 6. So then the 1, 5, and negative 6 cancel. My k squared piece is going to be 16 over n squared k squared. And my k stuff is going to be negative and negative, so negative 28 over n k. Okay. So that means this thing equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 4 over n of k going from 1 to n of this thing, 16, just to be clear, 16 over n squared, k squared, minus 28 over n k. So now I'm going to split my sum and pull out anything that doesn't have any, uh, to do with k. All right, so I still have 4 over n, and that 4 over n is multiplying everything, so I do need my brackets here. Now, this only cares about k, so i got to keep the k squared inside, but this thing can come out. So I'm going to get 16 over n squared times the sum k going from 1 to n of k squared. And that's just this first piece, minus, now the 28 over n can come out, and then I have the sum uh, k going from 1 to capital N of just k. And this is where I need those right special nifty formulas. Um, so the sum from k going from 1 to capital N of k is just n times n plus 1 over 2. And the sum k going from 1 to n of k squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay. So now I'm going to replace this with their relevant formulas. So I'm going to have still the limit as capital N goes to infinity of 4 over n times. In fact, maybe what I'll do while I'm at it is I'm going to multiply the 4 over n part, this part, against the coefficients. So 4 times 16 is 64 over n cubed. That's that times that, times the formula for k squared, right? So that's going to be n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6, minus these two. Um, so that's going to be 112 over n squared times the formula there, which is n times n plus 1 over 2. And now I can cancel some of this before I go too far. So I can cancel that down to a 2 and cancel that, and cancel that down to a 1 and cancel that. The 2 I can cancel against a 2 up here, which would get me, what, 56. Uh, the 6 I can cancel a 2 from there, which would get me down to 32. I think that's everything. So then I have 
set the limit as n goes to infinity. So I'm left with 32 over n squared times. I'm going to expand this out. So I'm going to get 2n squared plus n plus 2n, so that's plus 3n, uh, plus 1 all over 3 minus, and then I'm going to get 56 over n times n plus 1. In fact, I'm going to put that over 1 just to make the next step clear, which is that I'm going to essentially switch positionings. So I'm going to move the 3 out and the n squared in to get 32 over 3 times. And then if I do that, I'd have 2n squared over n squared, so that'd be 2, plus 3n over n squared, which would be 3 over n, and then 1 over n squared would be 1 over n squared. That's a squared. And similarly here, I'm going to do 56 over 1 times n over n is 1, 1 over n. I'm doing that because now when I evaluate the n going to infinity, right, as n goes to infinity, that's fine, that goes to zero. So I'm gonna, this goes to zero, that goes to zero, and that goes to zero. Nothing goes to infinity, so I'm safe. So if I actually evaluate the limit, I'm gonna get 32 over three times two plus zero plus two zero minus 56. Right, because it's 56 over 1, which is 56 times 1, still 56. 0 does nothing. So this is then 64 over 3 minus that times 3 is 168, I guess, over 3, which is negative 104 over 3, which doesn't simplify. So there is my answer. All right. So again, set it up sort of like a normal um, Riemann approximation. I'm using a right approximation. The only sort of difference is that I'm using some letter to represent the number of rectangles, right? So I have n rectangles, capital N. Then I apply f sort of within the sum so that I can get some uh, sort of expression in terms of n and k. But I really want it in terms of k, meaning that I grouped it as stuff with k squared, stuff with k, and stuff with k to the 0, but there was nothing there. And then um, when I sort of replace that, then I could split up my sum so that I ended up with a sum of k squared and a sum of k because the other things, right, the 16 over n squared, the 28 over n, don't depend on k. So I can pull them out of the sums. I can't pull them out of the limits, but I can pull them out of the sums. But those sums have nice closed forms, right? So I could replace the sum, right, the sigma notation with expressions, just these things. And once I've done that, Right, that's the ball game. So then I, I have to sort of simplify and simplify and simplify, but eventually I get to the point where I can evaluate the limit and get my answer. Okay. So that's that. Hello. So in this example, we are going to use a Riemann approximation to get the exact unsigned areas. This is tricky um, because what that means is that it wants to count all area as positive area. In particular, if there are places where this function is negative, we have to find those and then calculate the area for that independently of the places where it's positive so that we can add the two magnitudes up. So before I do anything else, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where this function is positive and where it's negative. And to do that, I just want to do a regular sign chart on the function. I don't need a derivative or a limit or any of that. Just sign chart on the function. So my function is right given right here. So it's uh, minus 2x squared uh, plus x plus 3. So the easiest way to do this is to factor that and then um, do the sign chart on that factored form. So I guess if I'm going to do that, I would do some like AC method, uh, but that'll get me minus 2x plus 3 and x plus 1. Uh, so I can double check. So I'm going to get uh, 3x minus 2x is 1x, 3 and 1 is 3, minus 2x and x is minus 2x squared. So I'm good. Okay. So this tells me that I'm going to get a 0 at x equals negative 1 and x equals 3 over 2. So then my sign chart, negative 1, 
and three halves. And in fact, I can pretty easily tell even just by looking at this original thing, right? Because this is a parabola, it's downward facing, which means that in the middle, it's gonna have the sort of highest points. So if these are the zeros, between that's gonna be positive and on either side will be negative. Or you can test values or whatever, whatever works for you. Point is, I now know where it's positive and negative and I wanna go between two and five. So that's a little annoying because two and five well, actually, I guess it's not too bad, right? Because two and five, when I look at on here, two is actually over here. Five is over here, meaning that they are the same sign, which is actually really useful um, because this means that I don't have to calculate two different Riemann sums for two different sections. I still have to do something, which is that this is going to show, right, because it's negative, this is going to show up as fully negative area, and I want unsigned, so I got to convert that to positive, but I can do that at the end because everything is negative. If instead I had something like, um, like I was going from zero to five, I'd have to split it at three halves, do a Riemann sum from zero to three halves and another one from three halves to five and calculate those entirely as separate problems and then add the absolute values of the answers together, which would be really obnoxious. <laughs> so let's then set our expression part up here. So as usual, right, I want the sum of the width times the height, where my width is going to be the full width, right, because I don't, I don't need to worry about the breaking it up part. So it's going to be um, 5 minus 2 over the number of rectangles, which is capital N, right, because I'm going to be doing a, a limit part here. So I'm going to have the sum k going from 1 to capital N of 3 over n, the width, times f of the first part, uh, 2, plus the number of widths I've moved, k, times their size of the width, 3 over n. Okay. So that means I'm going to want, I realized I, I wrote over the thing here, sorry. I was in the zone thinking, let me write that a little bit lower. So the width is um, the total width, 5 minus 2 over n, which is 3 over n. Okay. So I'm going to use the sum, k going from, sorry, k going from 1 to capital N of, uh, so I can take my 3 over N out, I'll have f of 2 plus k times 3 over N. And in particular, I'm going to take the limit as capital N goes to infinity, right? That's going to be how I get my exact uh, estimate. But that means I want to calculate this f of thing, right? Split it all apart and then put it back together as like groupings by where k is. So I'm going to apply f here. So I have my f up there. So it's minus 2 times the input squared. So that's going to be 2 plus 3 over capital N k squared plus the input. So plus 2 plus 3 over N k. Uh, plus 3. Okay. So then I'm going to expand this out. So I'm going to get minus 2 times uh, 4 plus 2 times those multiplied. So that's going to be 12 over n k uh, plus 9 over n squared k squared plus 2 plus 3 over n k plus 3, and that's going to be, expand this out, so I'm going to get minus 8 minus 24 over n times k minus 18 over n squared k squared plus 2 plus 3 over capital N k plus 3. Now I can put all this together. So my k squared is minus 18 over n squared, k squared. My k's, I have negative 
21 over n k. Then my constant, I have 5 minus 8, so I'm going to have minus 3. So that gives me the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 over n times the sum, k going from 1 to n, of this thing. So I'm going to have minus 18 over n squared k squared. In fact, I'm going to sort of break the sum up as I go across each of these pieces. So then I'm going to have minus the sum k going from 1 to n of this thing, 21 over n uh, k minus the sum k going from 1 to n of 3. Okay. So now I'm going to pull out everything that isn't k related, so these coefficients will come out. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 3, yeah, I'll leave it like that, 3 over n minus 18 over n squared k going from 1 to n of k squared minus 21 over n times the sum k going from 1 to n of k minus 3 times the sum k going from 1 to n of 1, right? Because it still has a thing in there. I'm dividing out the 3. And this is where I'm going to use those handy formulas, right? So in particular, the sum uh, k going from 1 to n of a constant, like 1. Well, that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. That's just n, right? Uh, the sum k going from 1 to n of k. This is that n times n plus 1 over 2. And the sum k going from 1 to n of k squared, that's the n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Okay. So that's, I'm going to replace these with their closed forms. And while I'm at it, I'm going to um, put the 3 over n in. So I'm going to have the limit of all of this. So that's going to be 3 times negative 18, so that's negative 54 over n cubed times the closed form for n squared. So that's going to be times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 minus these two. So that's going to be 63 over n squared times that. Right, the closed form for um, just k. So that's going to be n times n plus 1 over 2 minus 3 times that. So that's going to be 9 over n times the closed form for 1, which is just n. Okay. So again, I'm going to cancel out some stuff here. So that can cancel down to a 2 to cancel that. Uh, 3 down here can cancel against a 3 up there will get me back to 18. Uh, 2 doesn't cancel, but the n cancels against one of those, and that n just kills that n. Everybody's happy. I told I have a very um, violent view of math with annihilating and killing, but eh, it keeps things interesting. <laughs> All right, so then this is the limit as n goes to infinity. So I'm going to expand that out, and I'm going to switch the, the 2 over and the, um, the n squared over. So I'm going to get negative 18, I guess I got to cancel more, negative 18 over 2, so that's going to be negative 9 times uh, 2n squared plus n plus 2n, so plus 3n plus 1 over n squared minus... Uh, same deal here, so I'm going to get 63 over 2 times n plus 1 over n, and that's still just plus 9. And to be 
clear it's all of that. All right. And now I'm going to um, sort of break up the fractions by dividing by the ends in all these cases. So I'm going to get the limit as n goes to infinity of, so the minus 9 is going to stay there. Here I'm going to get 2 plus 3 over n and 1 over n squared minus 63 over 2 times 1 plus 1 over n minus 9. And this is good because now as n goes to infinity, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, that goes to 0, nothing goes to infinity, all good news. So now I can evaluate the limit and get minus 9 times 2 minus 63 over 2 times 1, right, 1, and that goes to 0, minus 9. So that's going to be negative 18 minus 27. So that's going to be minus 54 over 2, minus 63 over 2, which is negative 117 over 2, which you can't simplify. So that is my answer. Okay. So sort of as usual uh, at this point, right, so we set it up. Um, we have this extra step at the beginning to make sure that we sort of know um, what we're done. And in fact, I'm not quite done, but I'm done with the, the, the limit part is what I wanted to show. So we had to make sure we knew sort of where it was positive and where it was negative because we want unsigned area. So we've done this sum, but it turns out that's the only sum we need because of the fact that we're doing 2 to 5 and it doesn't switch sign there. So then we set it up as usual, right? Do the Riemann sum bit, uh, apply f, regroup it in terms of k's so that I can plug it in, split the sum according to the k's so that I can then use the closed forms, plug stuff in, chug along, do all the simplifying and stuff. That got me this negative 117 over 2. So this is the signed area, right? Because this is a negative, so clearly it has a sign. So this tells me that my my solution is the sum of the absolute values of all of the signed areas that I calculated, meaning in this case, it's the absolute value of this, which is 117 over 2. Okay? Because again, it wants the unsigned area. Okay. So that is that.